So now this is the And then part that B? Yeah, that gave me a little okay. example. The boy cleans all the mud from the target, then shoots a three kilogram rubber ball. So I guess I just don't have a good intuition about, and I know this is probably, you know, fairly simple, but so a, a completely, I'm not sure what happens to the velocities after a completely elastic collision. Ah, right. Like, do they just basically split the initial energy? Yeah, that can be tricky. Okay, so we'll try to clear that up as we go. Okay. Any ideas how you would get started here? Yeah, so um, for an elastic equation, I can use either momentum equation that I learned in class. Uh -huh. And I guess upon seeing that as an answer, um, did I do a calculation? I'm sorry? Okay, so this is the same as before. We have to figure out how fast it's going, how fast the rubber ball is going after it leaves the slingshot. So you used conservation of uh, energy again. I got a different answer than you did, though. Oh, I did you? Mistake here. 4 times 50 is 200, so this should have been 100, so this should have been 100, so this should have been 200. So is this what you got? Yes. Okay, good. So yeah, now I would change, switch over to using that to start, because that's kind of a funny number.
Okay, and now you're using, con uh, so what, what equation are you using here? So this is um, the equation for when, I don't know, I'm going to equations. I don't know what it's called. Okay. Yeah, so where's that equation? Good. Why are there no one halves in there? I don't know. Should because they would all cancel, right? Oh, because if they all have a one half, they would all cancel. Oh. So you can see, this is not an equation we should have to look up. This is just common sense. If, conserv if energy is conserved, then if you add up all the initial kinetic energies, that should equal all the final kinetic energies. Mm -hmm. These are all the kinetic energy terms. They just canceled out the one halves. Okay, so going back to here, it looks like you're using conservation of energy. So it looks like you're assuming this is elastic. How do you know it's going to be elastic? Because, um, because the rubber ball bounces off. Like it's not, the rubber ball could never stick to the target. That's right. However, that, that's not enough because just because something doesn't stick, doesn't mean that the collision is elastic. So there's three different terms here, elastic collisions, inelastic collisions, and totally inelastic collisions. A totally inelastic, well, elastic means that kinetic energy is conserved. Inelastic is the opposite. It means kinetic energy is not conserved. And then a subtype of that is totally inelastic, where kinetic energy is not conserved and the objects stick together. The key here is just because the objects are not sticking together doesn't mean that energy is conserved. It could just be a regular inelastic collision where the objects don't stick together, but kinetic energy is still not conserved. Okay. However, in this case, the key thing is that it's made out of rubber. And just you know, we're space expected to use our common sense, rubber is highly elastic. Yeah. Um, so just from our common sense, we know that rubber is highly elastic, so probably this is an elastic collision. Also, you just can't solve the problem otherwise. You have to make any assumptions necessary to solve the problem. Uh, well, we can't solve the problem here without assuming this is an elastic collision. Now, that means we can use conservation of energy. Can we use conservation of momentum? Well, yes. Momentum is conserved for pretty much any collision. I mentioned why that was earlier. All collisions are brief. They're so brief that there's not really any time for the momentum to change, pretty much. Um, they're so brief that there's not much time for any external forces to change the momentum. So momentum is conserved in all of these cases. Any collision, pretty much, you can use conservation of momentum but only in an elastic collision can you use conservation of energy. Now, the problem is that makes those types of problems pretty difficult because that gives you two complicated equations right. that you were just looking at, the conservation of momentum equation and the conservation that's, of energy equation. That's where I got to this problem. I got those two equations. However, the instructor has mercy on us because in the cheat sheet, they've already solved those equations for you. These equations tell you what will happen after an elastic collision, so you don't have to work through all that algebra. Um, and you put it in the cheat sheet here, so these are equations that uh, you uh, presumably would be fine with us using. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and try using these to get the answer here. Let's see how those would work. Okay. So we don't even have to bother trying to work through this conservation of energy equation, even though what you wrote down was correct, because they've already given us some cookbook formulas. Yeah. What was the question again? So the question is, what is? Yeah, next page. How fast is the target moving? Okay, target. good. So, so, which of those equations do we use? Um, this one. Yeah, probably it's most intuitive here to call the mud ball object one and call it and call the target object two. Yeah. So we'll use the equation for v two f.
What is that equation? Um, it's 2m2 two two divided by m1 plus m2 times mm -hmm. v1 initial mm -hmm. plus m2 minus m1 over m1 minus m2 times m1 plus m2. Uh, I'm losing. Can we try this one again? So yeah. this was m2 minus m1 over m1 